If you're interested in soaking your car parts for rust, I've got a collection of videos in my YouTube channel that can help you get through the process and I can show you some of the results I've produced. This video is about when molasses is not gonna do the job for you. The biggest misconception is probably that paint is safe in your molasses. Now I think to a degree that's true. Uh, you need probably a very hard, very mature cured paint will probably be good in molasses for up to a week. Uh, I would avoid it, I think it's a risk. I had uh, epoxy primed some panels because the steel was so beautifully clean. I thought I'd save myself a bit of time if I brushed on the primer and I wouldn't have to uh, deoxidine that outside of that panel. When I came out of the molasses, I thought I can just work on the rusty areas and the primer will protect this clean steel. The epoxy primer, I, I brushed on two thin coats and I left it to cure in the garage, no heat. It was winter in Melbourne. I gave it between two and three weeks. The paint was certainly set. I suspect it wasn't 100% hardened and cured. And then I put it in molasses for two weeks and the results was the paint was blistering and the steel was stained underneath. What I did was I wasted materials and created a whole lot of work for myself. I also pulled out a door with some very old primer on the inside that seemed softened and was able, I was able to wipe it off the steel. Uh, the paint was very thin and I think that enabled the molasses to attack it. All this stuff was in the molasses for three weeks during winter, that makes a big difference, where days often would get to a, a high of 15 degrees Celsius and lows of about two to four degrees. Another mistake is to think that if you get no bubbles and foam, you no longer have a chemical strength in your vat or you've eaten away all the rust. These are plausible ideas, but when panels are boxed up like a door, or in my case, the fender, which has a framing on the inside of it, the molasses eating the rust causes a gassing. And that gas can trap inside this panel and displace the molasses and prevent any further activity. So the gas will actually protect the rust from the molasses. So if I were doing a panel like this in the future, I would where the steel was compromised, I would probably drill relief holes to enable gas to vent and circulation of the fluid. Another thing I'd consider doing is pulling the panels out every week or every four days and pressure wash them to blast the mud out of them. This will give the chemistry better access to that rust when you remove that waste material. Obviously, you always want to lay your panels in there so that the rust is top side and none of that gases are going to trap but sometimes this is not possible because you also want to consider if, if your vat is lined with a skin or a plastic or a tarp you don't want to puncture that you have to keep those sharp edges off of it. I'm still pleased to say that molasses is the best option for rust on steel. Uh, for steel you can leave it in there as long as you want but as, as far as fiberglass body fill or bondo paints of any kind a long long exposure to molasses i would consider a risk and to be avoided now as a quick supplement what we have here is a battery tray for my 69 chevelle now, i just thought i'd share with you how it's uh, fared it's been in dry storage for a year and a year ago i soaked this in vinegar it was highly effective, did a very good job of stripping the rust out of it. Uh, I did a video. There was a tiniest little bit of a golden look of flash rust on it when, as soon as I dried it, and I just left it bare. Obviously because I'm not gonna be using this battery tray. This bracket goes onto the fender. This has been in the molasses. Now this is beautifully clean, but not because it's been in the molasses. Although I do think things may tend to clean up slightly better out of the molasses than they do the vinegar. Uh, this I used a rust converter on even though there wasn't any rust when it came out of the molasses.
Now, nearly a year ago, I was going to paint this, and I, I think I just forgot it or misplaced it and didn't get around to it, so I'd actually hit it with a wire brush, cleaning off of the majority of the build-up caused by the rust converter. Now, I'm not a big fan of rust converter. I, I think it does have some merits, though, and this is the proof. Now, surely the biggest problem with rust converter is it's a bit of a bit of an illusion. You're kind of bullshitting yourself if you think it's going to penetrate. Now, in my next video, I'm going to do a test with rust converter. I may use more than one type, and I'm going to test it for penetration. Uh, I believe this battery tray, rust converter would probably convert this rust, which is really just a tint of colour on steel, but as you get that thick, hard, scaly rust, I don't believe rust converter is going to do the job, but I'm going to find out.